Hey guys, my name is Fezan Khan and in this video we will see how we can build this space shooter game using Pygame module of Python. So this is our first game that we will be building using Pygame. So it's a very interesting game. You must have played. Uh, so let me just quickly give you a demonstration how this game works. So I have added a background music to this project. Okay, so you won't be able to hear my voice. So I will just show you how we can play this game. Since uh, it's our first game, so I have tried to keep it simple so that uh, beginners can understand this game easily. So I will be explaining everything from scratch step by step. So if you have a little bit of Python knowledge, then that is sufficient to uh, build this particular game. So there are many popular games that you can build or are actually built using Pygame module of Python only. Uh, like we can build Flappy Bird, uh, Snake Game. Pac-Man, Pong game, Tic-Tac-Toe, uh, there is this uh, Battlefield 2, right? So I'll surely teach you more games uh, in upcoming or future videos. So without wasting further time, let's get started. So what we need to do, firstly, I hope uh, you guys have uh, Python and any editor of your choice already installed on your PC where you will be writing your Python code okay so uh, i'll be using this pycharm so if you want to follow along you can also download and install pycharm i will be providing you the link uh, in the description of how to download and install python and pycharm on your pc okay so once you have your editor uh, means pycharm okay then you can go to file select new project okay here you need to give the project folder name I'll go with the uh, uh, space shooter game like this and you can choose any python interpreter of your choice 3.6 and above would be fine just click on the create button I'll open this in a new window so virtual environment is getting created so this project is now ready now what we can do we can create a python file inside which we will be writing our code so just right click on the folder then go to new and select python file here you need to give your python file name i'll go with main okay and here we will be writing our python code so as i told you in this particular project we will be using pygame module okay because this module help us in creating video games and this is our first game right so let's firstly import it so import pygame so this is how we import pygame but since it's an external module that's why we are getting this red line error here so we need to pip install this module so how can we install external modules uh, so in pycharm there are two ways one way is to go to terminal and type here pip install pygame okay so from here uh, if i hit enter it will be installed for me the other way of installing the same module is to go to file settings okay here you need to go to this project and then project interpreter so here uh, you can see this plus symbol just click on it and just search for your module name which is pygame in this case and since i have already installed so it's in blue color now but uh, if yours is not installed just select the uh, package and just click on install package and it will be installed for you okay so i hope you have understood it so once you install it 
now you won't see that red line on the module name okay so once you import this pygame now you will be able to use all the methods which are present inside this pygame okay uh, next thing after importing pygame you also need to initialize it so how do you initialize it you write pygame module dot init method like this and these two lines are very much important and are required whenever you will create any game using pygame okay so after this we need to create our game screen okay how we'll create it we'll again use this pygame module dot display module dot set mode method okay here we need to uh, pass uh, in the form of a tuple the width and the height okay so width and the height it's up to you whatever you want to choose you can select here like for example 800 is the width and 600 is the height okay that i am going to take and then i'll call this as a screen okay like this now if i'll run this code you can see we saw the screen for actually one second only and now the screen is not visible to us why is that because these three lines of code has been executed and after that there are no lines so our code ended successfully okay so what we need to do we need to keep our screen on hold so that we can see it continuously so what we can do we can use a loop here okay so i'll be using a loop while true so if i'll use a loop like this then it will be on a continuous loop so if i simply pass and run this code you can see that uh, uh, now we are able to see this window but it is hanging okay we won't be able to close it okay so why is that because uh, we are on a continuous loop okay never ending loop right so what we need to do we need to apply some condition here so basically what happens in case of uh, pi game okay whatever you do on a window that is nothing but known as event okay uh, whether you press any uh, keyboard keys or you move your mouse pointer or you click on close or maximize or minimize all these are known as events in pi game okay so close is also one of that event okay so what i will do instead of using directly a while true i'll take a variable and i'll give a variable name as running okay and uh, initially i'll assign true value to it like this okay and later on when uh, i'll be working with events okay later on uh, when i'll be clicking on that uh, cross button okay then i'll make this value as false so that we will come out of this loop okay so what we will do here instead of pass we will check for all the events that are occurring okay so we'll check for event in event uh, pi game dot event dot get okay so we'll get all the events okay so one by one all the events will be inside this event variable right and i'll check that if event is quit event okay uh, so it means that the user is trying to click on the cross button so if that is the thing then what we'll do we'll change the value of uh, running variable to false okay so that we can come out of this loop okay and our window will be closed successfully without uh, hanging right so here what i'll apply so here i'll check event type so i'll write event dot type equals to equals to pi game dot quit like this so when you will click on the cross button it means that the event type is pi game dot quit okay in that case i will change the running value to false so that we can come out of the loop like this okay now if i'll run this code now you can see now it's not hanging and we can simply close it so once we'll click on close running value will become false and we'll simply come out of the loop and our program will end i hope you understood it so let me explain you once more what we did firstly we have created our screen right and after that what we did we used a loop here 
why we uh, need to use a loop here so that we can see our screen continuously right but we have not applied true condition directly here uh, because if you will apply true condition directly then we will not be able to exit our screen okay because uh, then this code will be on a continuous loop right running loop so this while loop will never end and we won't be able to destroy our window so in order to destroy our window we use the concept of event here because everything uh, we do on our window that is nothing but an event like we press any keyboard strokes we uh, move our mouse pointer we click uh, anywhere using our mouse so all those are known as events so we are simply getting all the events so one by one all the events will be inside this event variable then we are checking the event type so event type if the event type is equals to pygame.quit it means you are trying to click on the cross button so if you are trying to click on the cross button then what i will do i will change the value of running to false so that this condition can become false and we can come out of this loop right and the next thing is we need to set the title of this game window okay so by default the title is pi game window but we will be changing it to space shooter game or something like that and then uh, we'll also see how we can change the icon here okay so by default icon is this one but we can change it too okay so let's see these two so to change the title of the title bar we have to use pygame module dot display dot set caption okay here we will pass the title in the form of a string okay so i'll go with space shooter game like this and then in order to change the icon image you need to get an image okay and you need to save that image in the same folder where your main.py file is existing okay so what i will do i will go to google chrome okay here i will show you from where i will get all my images that i will be using in this project so just go to this website flaticon.com okay here you can search for any uh, icons like uh, whatever you wish to choose okay so i'll search for space icons space ship or space invader whatever you choose okay from here you can uh, download any icon of your choice okay like if you like this one just click on it and from here you need to download the 32 pixel uh, image okay just click on this free download button and your image will be downloaded successfully then you need to just copy this image and paste in the same folder where your uh, main.py file is existing so this is that image that i will be adding as an icon this is 32 cross 32 png image okay that i have downloaded from flaticons.com now what you need to do uh, in order to set the icon you need to use pygame module dot image dot load method and you need to pass the image name in the form of a string so the image name is icon.png right so we need to give the object name uh, i'll give the object name as icon okay basically we are importing this image in our code here okay once you import this image now this image is represented by this variable right so what we need to do now we need to set this icon right so we'll use pygame dot display dot set icon method okay and here we need to pass the icon variable okay which is nothing but representing this image now if you'll run it you can see the icon is changed as well as the title is changed okay and the next thing is we need to add background image on our main screen okay so from where you can get the background image again you need to go to google and here you can search for uh, space background images okay like this 
and from the image section you can download the image whichever you like okay so i have already uh, downloaded one and that i will simply paste in the same folder where my main.py file is existing like this okay and don't worry i will be providing all these images to you okay so this is that uh, background image okay you can use any background image of your choice so again the same thing just like we imported this image in our code we need to import this image also in our code so it will be done in the same way so what we'll do we'll use this pygame module dot image dot load method okay and here we need to pass the image name which is bg.png okay and this image will be represented by some variable and the variable name here is background so when you load any image then at that point of time if you, if you will run the code you won't be able to see that image okay because you have just loaded the image but you have not drawn it means you have not displayed it on the screen okay so we need to set it on the screen so if you want to see any image continuously on your screen main screen then you need to add that or you need to draw that inside the running loop okay so inside this loop only uh, we will add or blit that image okay so how can we do that so since we want to add that image on our screen so we'll use this screen variable dot blit method so this blit is nothing but to draw something okay so what you want to draw we want to draw this background image right this one right and uh, from where you want to start drawing that dimension you need to mention x and the y value so the x value would be zero and the y value would be zero and the values has to be passed in the form of a tuple okay so zero comma zero stands for this position okay top corner only so this position is nothing but zero comma zero so our image will be placed from this position only okay so if i will run at this stage still you won't be able to see the background image because after blitting it on the screen we also need to update our display so that we can see the background image okay so here what i will do i will use pygame module dot display module dot update method okay like this so what this will do on each iteration of this loop uh, updation will take place and you will be able to see the background image okay now if i will run this code you can see we are getting our background image so i hope it's clear to you that we need to update to see anything on our screen and now after that we need to add our spaceship here uh, in the center bottom okay so we'll see how we can add it so as you know this is 0 comma 0 0 x 0 and y position okay if you'll move down the y value will increase okay uh, if you will move vertically down the y value will increase and if you move horizontally to the right okay so the x value will increase okay so i hope you uh, have a basic knowledge of this so again the same step that we need to get the image in our uh, same folder where our main.py file is and then we need to load the image okay so what we'll do uh, again we need to download the image so we'll go back to this uh, flat icon.com website and from here you can search for uh, arcade right like this and once you search it you will get a lot of options here okay so this is the one that i have downloaded and i'll be using okay that uh, this one i also use in my original project but it's up to you which one you would like and which one you would like to download okay so just download it and it will be 64 cross 64 size okay so once you go here from here you can select the size so the size that i'll be using is 64 cross 64 px once you download that image then paste here okay i'll be pasting it rk.png so this is that image that i'm going to use so now we need to load it so i'll use the same line i'll press ctrl d to copy the same line okay 
here i'll change the all object variable name to uh, player img okay this will be player image and the image that i need to pass here is arcade.png like this okay so once you load the image now you need to blit it okay which means you need to draw it on the screen so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to create a function here dev player and inside this function i'm going to blit this image player image okay so what i'll write i'll write a screen dot blit okay and here i'll blit this player image and at what position that position we need to mention here okay so which position we want to blit it if i run this code i want to blit at this position okay so what this position would be it would be the half of the width right half of the width and the height would be more than half right so as you can see the width that i have used is 800 and 600 is the height so i want this spaceship at 370 distance from the x-axis and 480 distance from the y-axis okay so let's see what uh, this position would be where our spaceship would be drawn so once you define this function you also need to call it so i'll be calling it from a running loop so that we can see this player uh, image continuously right so what i'll do just before this update line here i'll uh, simply call it so i'll write player like this so if i run this you can see we are getting our player here right okay so let me explain you few things here like why i have uh, used x value as 370 and y 480 i hope you are getting this that uh, we are using half of the width right but you see half of the width will be 400 right so why i'm not taking 400 if i choose 400 you will see a difference here right means it's not completely in the center the reason is because we also have the width of our uh, this is spaceship right 64 cross 64 so that is also creating issue so that's why uh, we cannot take complete half of the width so that's why i chose 370 and then why 480 because i wanted to keep my spaceship at the bottom at this position okay if i choose complete uh, 600 okay then where our spaceship will lie so you can see we are not able to see it okay so we need to give just less than this 600 okay so that's why if i'll go with 500 it would be around here right so if you want to go with 500 it's up to you okay it is also looking fine here but i'll go with 480 right next thing is you must be wondering why i am creating a function in order to blit an image and why i am not directly blitting an image just like i blit this uh, background image right i have loaded the image then inside the running loop i have blit the image why inside a running loop so that i can see the image continuously okay and next doubt would be why i have called this function from here and not uh, just before this blit line okay so let me just tell you this firstly so if i call this function from here what change would you expect if i run this code now you won't be able to see that spaceship why is that because we are inside a loop and firstly this player function is getting called okay so means player player image or the spaceship is getting blit means is getting drawn on the screen okay and after that the background image is getting drawn so what is happening here this background image is on top of this spaceship okay but what we want we want a spaceship on top of uh, the background image that's why i have to call this just after this screen dot blade background okay so that's why i was calling it from here okay so i hope you understood it 
and yes instead of uh, defining a function and calling it uh, we can directly blit uh, the player inside this while running loop we can do that uh, if you want to do it then just let's do that only okay so instead of defining a function and then calling a function what i'll do i'll simply blit here like this okay i hope now it's clear if i'll run it still you are able to see the image okay i hope it's clear to you next thing is that we want to uh, move this spaceship on the right hand side and on the left hand side so how will we do it we have to make changes in the value of x coordinate right so right now the x coordinate value is 370 okay so we need to change this value if you will increase this value okay means if it will it would be 371 372 373 and so on then your spaceship would move on the right hand side i hope you are getting it means if i will increase uh, 370 value okay then this spaceship would move to the right okay and if i decrease the value then the spaceship would move on to the left side okay let me show you so if i increase this value like uh, if i change it to 450 from 370 i am increasing the value to 450 you would see now the spaceship is at this position okay similarly if i decrease the value from 370 to 270 you would see it would be now on the left hand side like this okay so in order to move your spaceship left or right you need to decrease some value from the x coordinate value that we have used here right so what i will do instead of uh, providing directly the value i'm going to provide the variables here okay i will store x coordinate value inside this space ship x variable and y coordinate value inside this spaceship y coordinate uh, y variable okay and uh, similarly instead of this uh, player img i'll name it uh, spaceship okay spaceship img like this okay so uh, i'll uh, have to change here also A spaceship img like this so you can see red lines here why is that because these two variables are not defined and we are directly using them so let's define this so just before this while loop let's define here a spaceship x equals to 370 and a spaceship y equals to 480 like this so why i am using variables instead of direct values because we need to change the values right we need to modify the values especially the value of x because we need to move our spaceship in left and the right direction right so let's see how we can move the spaceship on the left and the right hand side so what we need to do we need to change the x value right so what we will do uh, here i'll change the spaceship x value okay by some number so if i increase it by one what you will see if i increase this value by one and then the updated value would be passed here and at that particular updated value this spaceship will be drawn right so if i run this you will see the spaceship is moving to the right okay why to the right because we are increasing the value of it by one okay if we decrease the value by one then you will see it is moving on the left hand side right but uh, we have to use our uh, arrow keys to move our spaceship either on the left hand uh, left direction or the right direction okay so we'll use right arrow to move to the right direction we'll use left arrow to move to the left direction so how will we do it okay as I already explained you that whatever you do on your Pygame screen that is nothing but uh, an event right 
so uh, when you press keyboard keys that is also known as event so all those events will be inside this pygame.event.get method okay so when you will press any key that event would go inside this event variable okay and then here what we will do we will check so how will we check so we will write if event dot type equals to equals to pygame dot key down okay so key down means that you are pressing any keyboard key okay so let me just print something like for example i'll print hello so when you will press any key then hello would be printed okay so if i'm pressing any key you can see hello is getting printed so our spaceship is moving out of the window the reason is because the x value is getting uh, reduced by one that is why so if we remove it means for now if we don't do the change then you won't see the spaceship moving on the left hand side okay so if you are pressing any key then uh, this hello is getting printed on the console right but here what we have to check that which key is getting print uh, pressed okay so what i will do i'll write uh, event dot key okay we'll check if it it is equals to pi game dot key left k underscore left so if you are pressing the left arrow key then this condition will become true okay in that case what i want i want to decrease the value of this spaceship x variable right so what i will do i'll take some variable here like uh, change x okay and initially i'll provide zero value to it okay so what i will do inside this whenever you will press the left arrow key i'll change the value of this variable by one okay i'll modify it to uh, minus one okay because we want to reduce the value of spaceship x right so we'll use minus one here okay similarly if you'll press the right arrow key in that case the change x value i will increase by one okay so what i'll do i'll simply copy the same line because uh, the condition would be checked in the similar way only the change would be here instead of key left we'll write key right okay so if the user is pressing key right in that case we will change the value of this variable to one okay and then as we did before we'll change the spaceship x value okay so i'll plus equals to change x okay so y plus equals to change x so suppose you are pressing the left key okay in that case change x value will be equal to minus one okay suppose once you have pressed the left key change x value would be minus one right then that uh, minus one value will be deducted from 370 so now it would be 369 okay once you will again press uh, the left arrow key again minus one would be detected okay because plus minus is nothing but minus uh, this can be represented like this also if i show you in the form of a comment that spaceship x equals to spaceship x minus change x okay so whenever you will press the left key this calculation will be performed means one would be deducted from the spaceship x value okay and the value would be updated so if i run this now if i press my uh, left arrow key you can see the spaceship is moving on the left hand side after i released the left arrow key is still uh, the spaceship is moving in the left hand side direction okay why is that because we have not applied condition what will happen if we will release our key okay similarly if i show you for right hand side if i uh, press right arrow key 
you will see the spaceship is moving in the right hand side and once i release the right arrow key still the spaceship is moving continuously okay so what i want when i release our left or right key in that case we don't want to change any value inside this spaceship x okay we don't want to change uh, this value okay whatever this value would be uh, it should remain same when uh, we are releasing our key okay so here what i'll do i'll apply the condition again that if event dot type equals to equals to pi game dot key up okay key up means you are releasing the key so if you are releasing the key then let me firstly print something that key released so that you can understand okay so if i run this code again so if i'll move the uh, uh, you can see on the console what is happening so if i press uh, the right arrow key okay it is moving but i released okay so you can see its uh, key released is printed here on the console okay because once i release the right arrow key okay this print statement is getting executed okay but we don't have to print anything what we have to do we have to make this change x value back to zero means we don't want any modifications now once we release the key okay so this uh, zero uh, if you add zero or you subtract zero to this spaceship x value uh, nothing would change okay it will remain as it is so if i run this code again now if i press my left arrow key it's moving when i release the left arrow key it is stopping at the updated spaceship x value okay similarly if i move the right arrow key it is moving to the right but if i release the key it is stopping at the updated spaceship x value okay so i hope you have understood that how we can move this spaceship on the right and the left direction okay uh, but here there is an issue that uh, if i move this spaceship on the right hand side okay it will simply go out of the screen okay what is happening the x value is continuously getting increased by one right and what i want that after reaching the border of this window the spaceship should not move outside of this window right and similarly if i will move the spaceship on the left hand side it should not go beyond the border of this starting border right so what change we will do so we basically have to apply a condition here okay so what condition we can apply here we'll check that if a spaceship okay if a spaceship x value is getting lesser than or equal to zero okay means it is touching the starting border okay or going out of the border okay out of the screen in that case what i will do i will change back the spaceship x value to zero let me show you if i run it if i press left arrow key it will go okay once it is trying to go less than zero it is coming back to the zero position only okay i hope you are getting this it is now not going below zero value okay because once it is getting lesser than zero value or is equals to zero then we are simply setting the spaceship x value back to zero only okay similarly for the right hand side what we will do if it is touching this border okay then we won't allow it to go beyond it okay we will simply set it to this position only so if the player continuously 
is pressing the right arrow key still this spaceship would remain at this position only and will not go outside of the window okay so just like we applied this condition for the left hand side will apply for the right hand side so i'll copy this same line or instead of if again uh, let me use lf this time okay lf spaceship x is greater than or equal to 800 why 800 because 800 is the width of our screen means the end of our screen right so if i'll use 800 you will see what will happen okay so i'll change the spaceship x value to 800 okay this is what i was telling you right so if the spaceship x value will be equal to 800 or greater than 800 then i'll set the spaceship x value to 800 so if i will run so if i move this in the right direction you can see it is still going outside of this window okay why is that because we have provided 800 value so the spaceship will start drawing from this position okay this position and it will take 64 pixels because the size of the spaceship is 64 pixels right so from 800 position it will start uh, will be start drawing and it would take 64 pixels similarly here in the case of uh, zero we mentioned zero because uh, the spaceship would start from this position only and it would take 64 pixels right so if i move this spaceship here on the left hand side you will see the difference okay so zero means that the spaceship would be starting from this position only and 800 means that the spaceship would start from this position and it would take 64 pixels okay it will go outside of the window only right i hope you are getting this so what we will do from 800 we will subtract 64 okay so it would be 736 right so that we will add here so if the spaceship uh, would be greater than or equal to 736 then we'll change the spaceship x value to 736 like this so now if i run this if i move to the right you can see now it is not going beyond uh, the screen okay i hope it's clear to you why we are using 736 value and not 800 okay so i'm uh, keeping this spaceship uh, simple i'm just moving this spaceship in the left and the right direction and not up and down uh, but if you want to add more functionality then you can surely add up and down functionality also that when you will click up arrow this spaceship would move upwards and if you will press down arrow you will this spaceship would move downwards okay so it's a task for you if you want you can do this task okay and one more thing uh, i want to increase the speed of this spaceship okay so in order to increase the spa uh, speed of this spaceship what we can do we just have to change uh, the value of this change x variable right if i make it 5 okay if i make it 5 then the pixels would change fast right if i show you if i press right arrow you can see how fast it is moving now okay so it's up to you uh, what speed you want to use okay so what we did we firstly checked that if keyboard key is getting pressed or not and then we checked whether that key is left key left arrow key or not okay and if it's a uh, left arrow key then we have changed the variable value this variable you can treat as a speed variable okay once you will add this much of speed to your x coordinate okay it will move on the left hand side basically you are decreasing this much of a speed okay from your spaceship x variable right and then if the user is pressing the right arrow key in that case this condition will become true 
and you are increasing the speed okay by 5 pixels so if you are pressing the arrow key then this code will be executed and if you are not pressing any arrow key means you are releasing the key then this code will be executed so here we are changing the speed to 0 and then whatever change will be there that change I am simply adding or subtracting to this spaceship x value okay and then I have applied this condition I hope you understood why I applied this condition so that my spaceship should not go outside of the window this would allow our spaceship not to go outside of the window on the left hand side and this code will allow the spaceship to not go outside of the window on the right hand side okay so now what we have to do you can see this spaceship is very alone in this space it is waiting for enemies actually so we need to create enemies right and then this spaceship will try to shoot those enemies okay so we will be using picture of enemy just like we use picture of a spaceship so from where we got a spaceship picture right so we'll go back to that uh, flat icon.com website and here you need to type uh, space invaders okay and you need to search so from here you can download any uh, alien pic which you can use as an enemy okay whichever you like you can download that and it would be 64 cross 64 suppose if you try to download this one then you'll have to choose the pixel 64 cross 64 okay and it should be png image okay so once you download it then you just need to paste in the same folder where you're working okay like this enemy.png so i have downloaded this image and i will be using this one okay it's a 64 cross 64 png image so as we were doing things for spaceship similar things we have to do for this enemy.png also so firstly we need to load this image so just like we loaded this spaceship image in the same way we will load the enemy image so i am simply going to copy the same line with the help of control d okay and i'll name it to uh, enemy or alien whatever you choose alien image okay and here you need to pass the image name so image name is enemy.png like this so now this variable is representing this image okay and after loading the image next thing is we need to blit this image and we will blit this image in our running loop so that we can see the image continuously okay so wherever you want you can blit it like if you want to blit after blitting the spaceship you can do it so uh, you can copy the same line like this and then instead of a spaceship image variable this time this would be alien image okay and instead of passing a spaceship x a spaceship y values you can pass some other values uh, like uh, i want the alien to be uh, in the center top position okay so i'll use uh, width as the half of the screen width okay so i'll uh, use 400 maybe and the y value would be uh, around 50 so as you can see we are getting our enemy here okay and now this spaceship would be able to shoot it but uh, right now we have not added that functionality so it won't work and also if you see uh, this uh, enemy is not moving and there is this one enemy only so firstly we will work on our first enemy and then uh, will create all the enemies because the functionality with those enemies would be similar okay so initially what I want that uh, whenever I run the code I should see this enemy at different positions okay anywhere on this window okay so what I will do I will use random module to randomly place this enemy on the screen okay so I'll import it so it's an inbuilt module which help us to get the random values okay 
so what i will do here i have loaded the enemy right so what i'll do i'll take some variables here like alien x okay and the x value of the alien would be a random value okay so what i'll do i'll use random dot random method okay here we need to pass the range from where to where okay so i want to see my alien on the x axis anywhere between 0 to 736 right so i'll use 0 comma 736 so what this method will do it will return any random value okay and that random value will be stored inside this alien x variable it can be like 400 so 400 would uh, be stored inside this variable right similarly we will do it for uh, y okay so i'll create another variable alien y okay and here also i want to get random values and i'll use this random uh, method so i want the enemy to only appear uh, at the top position okay anywhere on the top position so i'll mention uh, 30 to 150 okay so 30 to 150 any random value would go inside this alien y variable okay and then instead of passing uh, directly 450 what i will do i will use those variables okay so alien image would be blit at these positions only alien x comma alien y okay so whatever value would be stored inside these two variables those values would be passed inside that blit function okay and you will see your alien at that particular x and y position okay so if i run it you can see right now this enemy is appearing at this position okay if i run it again you will see again it would appear at some other random position like this i hope you are getting it so this is how it will work okay so suppose instead of 150 if i would have given the complete 600 or maybe uh, 536 so what would happen you will some uh, time you will see your enemy going uh, very close to the spaceship so initially i don't want to uh, put this enemy closer to spaceship okay i want it anywhere uh, till uh, this position okay so i hope you understood this concept right so i don't want this enemy to appear here uh, initially okay that's why i haven't uh, provided 536 or 600 value okay so i'll stick with uh, 150 okay so now let's work on the movement of this alien how this alien is gonna move so what i want i want this alien to move in the horizontal direction in the x-axis okay so if this alien is moving in the right hand side okay once it will touch this border it will again start moving on the left hand side okay and once it touches the left border it will move back to the right hand side and this way it will continue moving okay so firstly let's add this functionality of the movement of this alien in the x direction so what i have to do if i have to move this alien on the right hand side then we need to increment this alien x value right and if we want it to move on the left hand side then we need to decrease this alien x value right just like we did in the spaceship case so in this while running loop what i'm going to do uh, here uh, i'll simply change this alien x value okay so what i'll do i'll firstly increase the value by one so if i run this code now you will see that this is moving in the right direction okay and it will go outside of this window because we have not applied condition to stop it at this border okay similarly if you want to uh, move it on the left hand side then we'll simply subtract some value from this alien x variable right like this okay so after this i want if this alien touches this left border it should start moving to the right direction okay 
and if it touches the right border it should start moving in the left direction it should not go outside of the window okay so what we'll do so we will be doing the similar thing that we did in case of a spaceship okay so instead of subtracting one from this alien x value okay i'll take a variable here okay so i'll name this variable uh, alien speed x okay like this okay so instead of uh, subtracting i'll simply add this value okay and let me just define this alien speed x variable at the top and let's assign some value to it so alien speed x value would be 1 okay because we were subtracting or adding 1 to it okay so if i add means if i just assign 1 to it so in that case what will happen uh, 1 would be added inside this alien x variable okay so that means the alien would start moving on the right hand side so if i run this code you can see it is moving on the right hand side so if i add minus 1 to it what will happen it will uh, go on the left hand side why because from the alien x one value is getting subtracted i hope this is understood by you okay and next thing is we need to apply the condition that if this enemy touches this border it should start moving on the right side okay and if it is touching the right border then it should start moving on the left side okay just as i already told you about this okay so let's add this so here i'm going to apply this condition that if alien x okay if this alien x is less than or equals to zero in that case i will simply change this alien speed x value to positive one so if alien speed x variable value would be one then this alien will start moving on the right hand side okay and if this alien x is greater than or equal to 736 okay so i hope you are getting why i'm using 736 i already explained in this case right so here what i'll do i'll change this alien speed x variable value to minus one okay so when it will be minus one then the value will be subtracted from this right and if it would be plus one then the value would be added to this variable okay so if i run it you will see when it will touch this left border it will start moving on the right hand side okay and when it will touch the right border it will start moving on the left hand side okay so i hope you understood this condition right and the next functionality i want is when this alien touches the left or the right border i want to move it a bit down okay i want to increase the value of y okay So whenever the alien will touch the left or the right border, what I want, I want to increase in the y value. Okay. So what I'll do uh, here, I'll use this alien y. Okay. And I'll increment the value by some pixels like uh, 40 pixels. Okay. And similarly here also, when it will touch the right border then also i want to move the alien a bit down so here also i'll use the same thing plus equals to 40 so here also i'll increase the alien y position by 40 pixels okay so now if i run it you will see that once this alien touches the left border it will come a bit down similarly when it will touch the right border it will come a bit down okay like this it will keep on coming down and once it will go below this spaceship then our game would be over okay so this is the functionality that we have to add basically okay so this is making a bit interesting right that uh, this alien is coming down again and again when it is touching the borders okay so it will be a bit tough for the spaceship to kill enemies okay this is the only enemy that i have created for now but there will be uh, five to six more enemies okay 
so i hope you got the idea of the game like uh, the enemies will keep coming down okay and the spaceship will try to kill all those enemies okay when the spaceship will uh, kill those enemies the score will increase and as soon as the enemy uh, reaches to the spaceship then our game would be over right so here instead of directly using uh, the value 40 what i will do i will create a variable here just like we created alien speed x i'll create alien speed uh, y because we are changing in y right so here also i'll use the same variable alien speed y okay and i need to define this variable right so here only i'll define it just like i defined this one i'll define the alien speed y variable and initially uh, i was assigning uh, means i changed 40 pixels right so 40 pixels i think it's too much so i'll go with 10 pixels only okay so now if i run you will see only 10 pixel change in the y direction okay so i hope you understood if you want to increase the value it's up to you okay and now let's work on the functionality of the bullet so let's see how we can create a bullet okay so we'll be requiring a bullet image right so again you need to go to that flat icon website okay flat icon and here you can search for bullets okay so you will be getting lot of bullet images here from here you can download any one of them of your choice and the size would be 32 pixels okay so if you want to select this one just select the size as 32 pixels and download it okay so i have already downloaded and i'll be using it so i'm pasting in my folder here bullet.png so this is the bullet that i have downloaded okay so in order to create the bullet firstly we need to load the image right in our code just like we added this enemy.png okay so similarly we'll do it so what i'll do i'll simply copy the same line okay and here uh, i'll paste it or maybe after these two variables because these variables are of alien only okay so let me just separate it like this okay so this one would be bullet image okay and i'll have to give the image name image name is bullet.png like this so once you load the image now you need to blit it okay so when you want to blit it okay when you want to see the bullet when you will press the space bar key right you want to see that bullet when you press the space bar key and the bullet will move in the y direction okay so basically what will happen the y value will keep on decreasing of the bullet okay and it will go on the top okay i hope you are, you can imagine it okay so once you'll decrease the y value the bullet will go up okay and when you'll increase the y value the bullet will come down okay but we don't have to do that thing okay we just have to move the bullet upwards okay so what i'll do i'll firstly have to check here okay that if space bar key is getting pressed or not okay so if the key is down it means you are trying to press a key right so here we'll check that if that key is a space key or not a space bar key or not okay so i'll write if event dot type equals to equals to pi game dot k space okay this represents a space key so in this case i'll have to blit that image right so when you will press the space bar key then only you want to uh, see that bullet image okay instead of event dot type it would be event dot key okay because we are checking for the space bar key right just like we checked for the right key right so here what we'll do uh, if you press the space bar key i want to uh, see that particular image right so what i will do here uh, if i blit the image here let's see what will happen 
so if i use a screen dot blade method and uh, the image name is bullet image okay and where you want to see this image uh, let me just give some direct values like 370x and 480y value okay so if i run at this stage if i am pressing the spacebar key you can see you can only see this bullet whenever i am pressing the spacebar key okay as soon as i release the spacebar key you cannot see it continuously right so what i want i want whenever i press the spacebar key i should see this bullet image continuously okay so instead of adding or blitting uh, the bullet image at this position i will blit it uh, here okay where we have already blitted spaceship and alien image okay so now uh, if i'll run this code at this stage firstly you will be getting that error that uh, we need to pass here for now okay so if i pass for now means i have not uh, given any code to it if i directly run it you can see we are seeing this bullet continuously okay i want to see this uh, bullet image only when i am pressing the space bar key okay so what i will do so i will take a variable that will check whether the user has pressed the space bar key or not okay so the variable uh, name i can take as check okay and here i'll pass true value to it okay so if uh, the space bar key is pressed then inside this check variable uh, true value will be stored okay and initially initially i'll put uh, false value inside this variable okay so initially the check variable has false value okay so when you will press the space bar key then this check variable value will be turned to true okay once it is true then only we will show this bullet image okay so here also i'll apply a condition that if check variable value is true okay is true like this then only i want to blit this bullet image okay so now if i run this code if i press the space bar key you can see when i'm pressing the space bar key then only you are seeing this bullet image and it is continuously showing right it is not disappearing okay so i hope you have understood why i have created this check variable okay to check whether the user has pressed the space bar key or not so initially i have assigned false value to it okay and when the user will press the space bar key then the value will change to true okay and once the value is true this condition will become true right and then uh, you will see bullet image on the screen at this position right so instead of passing direct values 370 and 480 what i'm going to do i'm going to create two variables like bullet x okay and here it would be bullet uh, y okay and let me just assign some values so these are two variables so let me just uh, assign some values to these variables bullet y bullet x equals to 370 okay and uh, bullet uh, y equals to 480 okay so if i run now still you will see the same result like this but if you see this bullet is appearing at this position okay where i want to put this bullet i want to put this bullet at the tip of this spaceship okay so that when i will press the spacebar key it will look like that it is coming out from this position only okay it is coming out from this position only so what i'll do i'll increase some x and y values so what i'll do i'll increase this to x value to uh, 86 okay and this y value to 490 let's see so if i press the spacebar key 
so since the image is at this position that's why you are not able to see it okay if i uh, decrease some value like if i make it y value to 450 okay if i press the space bar key you can see the bullet is appearing at this position right i want to uh, give you an illusion that the bullet is coming out from this spaceship okay that is why i am uh, creating this bullet at this position only where we have uh, the tip of the spaceship okay so instead of 450 i'll change it back to 490 okay so i hope you understood that the bullet will be at that particular position only but since it's behind the spaceship that's why you won't be able to see it for now at least when i'll press the space bar key okay and now what we have to do we have to move the bullet upwards whenever the user will press the space bar key right so if the space bar key is being pressed then this condition will become true right and you will see bullet image getting drawn on the screen right and just after this what i will do i will change this bullet y value okay to move it upwards i will have to decrease some value from it like if i decrease uh, value one from it okay let's see what will happen so if i press the space bar key you can see minus one is getting decreased and this is going outside of the screen okay but uh, again we don't want it to go outside of the screen okay what we want when this touches this zero position our bullet touches this zero position i want this bullet to come to its original position again this position okay so what i will do uh, here i'll apply condition okay so here i'll apply condition that uh, if bullet y okay if this bullet y is less than or equals to zero okay in that case i'll uh, keep this bullet back to its original position so what i will do i'll write bullet y equals to 490 uh, okay to its original position the position that we set here uh, 490 right okay so now if i run it if i press the space bar key you can see it is going up okay and again once it reaches to this position again it is coming back to its original position 490 pixels y position and from it again it is moving upwards okay so i hope you are getting this how this bullet is moving upwards so this code is setting the bullet position back to its original position whenever the bullet will reach the uh, border top border okay i hope you are able to understand it and then why we are decreasing this uh, one from this bullet y variable so that the bullet can move upwards okay so i hope it's clear to you and instead of writing if condition like this if i directly write like this if check still uh, this will mean the same thing okay so if check will be true okay then this condition will become true okay and these two lines will be executed okay so if i run it again you will see the same thing once i press the space bar key you can see the bullet is moving upwards from the same position okay so i hope it's clear to you and one more thing when i press the space bar key once this bullet is going up okay but i am not pressing the space bar key still the bullet is going up automatically okay so what we have to do okay because this check variable value is set to true that is why this is happening so once you set the value back to 490 means the bullet is set to its original position then we'll uh, make this check variable back to false okay so that when the user will press the space bar key again then only the bullet will come out of the spaceship okay 
so if i run it again if i press the space bar key once you can see the bullet is moving upwards okay and now it is not again automatically coming out from this spaceship right if i'll press the space bar key then only this thing will happen okay so when you are pressing the space bar key check variable value is getting true okay this condition is getting true right this thing is happening okay and then once uh, it reaches the zero position the bullet value uh, bullet y value is set to 490 and the check variable becomes false again okay so when the user will press space bar key again the check value will become true again and again these steps will be repeated okay so i hope it's clear and we need to fix one more thing if i run this code okay if i fire a bullet okay this bullet is going up okay and now the bullet is set to this position only but if i move my spaceship at this position and now if i try to uh, fire a bullet this bullet is getting fired from this position this is not looking good right so i want the bullet should always fire from this position only okay so what i will do this is the x direction right our spaceship is moving in the x direction only right so what i will do i will uh, change the bullet x position according to the spaceship x position only okay so whenever you will press the space bar key okay whenever you are trying to press the space bar key in that case what i will do whatever the spaceship x value is okay i will assign that to uh, bullet x value like this okay so bullet x value will be the same as spaceship x value we will also have to add uh, 16 to this uh, spaceship x value why we have to add it let me first show you if i don't add it what will happen so if i press the spacebar key you can see that the bullet is coming out from this position right but i want it to come out from this position okay so that's why i'm increasing the x value okay i hope you are getting it i am increasing the x value because initially if you see i have taken bullet x value as uh, 386 right but spaceship x value is 370 so there is a difference of 16 between these two values okay so what i will have to do i will have to increase this to plus 16 okay so that our bullet can come out from the tip of the spaceship so now if i run this code if i press the spacebar key you can see it is coming out from the tip okay now if i move this spaceship still it is coming out from the tip okay but uh, if you see uh, if i try to kill this enemy nothing will happen because we have not uh, added this functionality right so we'll add this later on but here uh, is one uh, issue uh, that i want to show you that if i press the spacebar key okay if i move somewhere and press the spacebar key what is happening from here the bullet is changing its position to here okay so what is basically happening so when you are pressing the spacebar key what is happening this bullet x value is getting changed according to this spaceship x value right that is why the bullet is coming to the spaceship x position only right so if i uh, show you once more what is happening if i uh, click the spacebar key multiple times and move this spaceship you will see that this bullet is taking the spaceship x position only right so in order to avoid this issue what i will do i will shoot the bullet only when uh, this uh, bullet y position is set back to its original position which is 490 okay so when bullet is at its original position then only the user should press the space bar key okay uh, means then only the bullet should start moving okay 
otherwise the bullet won't move in between okay so in order to do that uh, since this uh, check value is false false means that the user has not pressed the spacebar key right so what i will do here i will apply a condition that if check value is false okay if this check value is false then only make the check value as true okay and then only uh, make the bullet x position according to the spaceship x position okay i hope you are getting it now if i run this code if i press the spacebar key and if i move the spaceship and try to press the spacebar key it won't work okay because the bullet was in motion only okay it was not set to its original position okay that's why the spacebar key was not working okay once it is back to its original position then only the spacebar key will work okay i hope you are getting it and now let me increase the speed of the moving bullet so i am decreasing one from this bullet y value right so instead of one let me just decrease five and let's see uh, how this looks yeah so i think this is fine right so let's keep this as a value bullet value okay so uh, right now nothing is happening when uh, i'm trying to shoot this enemy okay the bullet is passing through this enemy but uh, i don't want this thing to happen what i want when i am trying to kill this enemy and once this bullet touches this enemy this enemy should be destroyed okay basically uh, this enemy should start from its original position then okay so when i shoot this enemy it should go back to its original position okay and at the same time the score should be increased okay i hope you are getting it so let's see how we can uh, write the functionality for this collision okay how this collision will happen basically we will be uh, considering the distance between the bullet and this enemy okay this bullet and this enemy and if the distance will be uh, very close means if the bullet will be at this position okay then we'll show that the collision has occurred okay so how will we do all this let's see so in order to show the collision between the bullet and the enemy or the alien uh, i will be creating a function here so let me just call this function first of all here so function name is collision okay like this and i'm calling it so i need to uh, define this function also right instead of creating a function and defining it you can directly write if, uh, all the code here but uh, it will be messy so that's why i'm creating a separate function this time and simply calling it from this while running loop okay so let me just define this function here at the top uh, wherever you want you can define it so i will be defining just above this while running loop okay so here i'll write def collision so as i told you we will be requiring the distance between the enemy and the bullet uh, in order to show the collision right so there is uh, a mathematical formula for calculating the distance between uh, two points okay so basically we will be using the x and the y coordinates of one point and the x and the y coordinate of the other point okay so basically we will use the x and the y coordinate of uh, the bullet and the x and the y coordinate of the enemy okay so with the help of that we can calculate the distance between them okay so let me show you what is the formula for calculating the distance between two points okay so if you see this image here okay so this is a formula distance equals to square root okay x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square okay so x1 and y1 are points one okay so you can imagine point one as a enemy okay and x2 y2 are points two you can imagine point two as bullet okay 
so just imagine this is your enemy and this is your bullet okay so in order to calculate the distance between the enemy and the bullet you have to use this particular formula okay so i hope you are getting it and here x1 and y1 are nothing but alien x and alien y value and x2 y2 is bullet x and bullet y value okay so let's use this formula in our code so in order to use mathematical formula or to perform mathematical calculations okay we will be requiring a math module so this is an inbuilt module so at the top you just need to import it so import math like this and once you import it now you can use this formula with the help of math module so math dot sqrt for square root okay so firstly what we have to do we have to subtract the x coordinate of a bullet with the alien okay so we will be requiring these variables bullet x and alien x okay and once you subtract them then you need to square them okay so we will be using again math dot power method this is used to square something okay so in order to square you will uh, write 2 okay if you want to cube then you will write 3 and just before it you need to mention what you want to square okay so we want to square the difference between bullet x and alien uh, x right so here we can pass And similarly, we need to square the difference between bullet y and alien y. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll simply copy this thing, control C, and I'll paste here, control V. Okay, and once you find these two things, okay, then you need to sum up. So I'll plus them simply like this. Okay. And instead of bullet x it would be bullet y and alien x it would be alien y like this so i hope now you are getting it so this is how you will write the formula in our code okay this is that same formula that we discussed here the square root x2 minus x1 square so x2 is nothing but uh, alien x okay x1 is nothing but bullet x okay then we need to square them similarly y2 minus y1 is y2 is alien y and y1 is uh, bullet y okay and once you square these two then you need to sum up so we are using plus symbol in between i hope you are getting it so this will give you the distance that you can store in some variable like distance okay and once the distance between the bullet and the alien is less than some value like uh, if i check if it is less than uh, 27 or 37 whatever you want you can check okay you can uh, play with these values okay which value fits so you can check accordingly and then uh, if this distance is less than 27 I will show that the collision is occurring okay so in that case what I'll do I'll simply firstly let me just print that collision collision occurred so once the distance between the enemy and the bullet will be less than 27 you will see a collision occurred printed on the console here so let me run and show you so if I shoot a bullet you can see collision occurred is getting printed right so whenever the distance between these two would be less than uh, 27 you will see collision occurred getting printed okay i hope you are getting it and because we are calling this function from a while running loop right that is why you are seeing collision occurred getting printed multiple times okay because we are in a infinite loop okay so we don't have to print anything what we have to do we are simply going to return true value 
so if the condition would be true we will be returning true value from here okay and when you return any value in a function where does it go it goes to the same position from where you are calling this function okay so this true value i am going to store in some variable collision occurred and then here we will check that if collision occurred is true or not so if this will be true in that case the collision has occurred right so what we are going to do then for now let me just pass it and run this code you won't see any change for now if i try to shoot this enemy nothing is happening the bullet is passing through this enemy but what i want once i shoot the bullet and uh, this bullet hits the enemy okay uh, the bullet should come back to its original position which is 480 pixels y position okay and this uh, uh, alien or this enemy should go back to its original position okay i hope you are getting it so let's see so instead of simply passing what i'm gonna do i'm going to uh, put the bullet y position back to 480 okay and also we need to make this check variable as false right so if you won't make it false what will happen let me just show you if i remove this so if i only make the bullet y position to 480 so if the bullet doesn't collide it will simply pass but if it collides you can see what is happening okay the bullet is going back to its original position and again coming out from it so what we want once the bullet reaches to its original position okay uh, behind the tip of the spaceship then we'll make the check va variable value back to false okay so that the bullet should not come out again and now you won't see that issue if i run it right so i hope it's clear to you after this i want to change the position of the uh, alien right I want to uh, put it to its original position and the original position uh, was random right as you can see here so I'm simply going to copy these two lines and we'll be putting it there okay so this will move the alien back to its original X and the Y position which will be random positions okay so if I run now if I try to hit the enemy you can see it is going back to its original position okay so let me show you once it comes a bit down then you will understand it so finally the enemy has come this much closer to the spaceship and now if i shoot this enemy you can see it is coming back to its original dimensions that we set right and one more thing uh, what i want that when i uh, kill this enemy okay my score should also increase so what i will do i will uh, take a variable initially okay let me just take a variable here score and uh, initially i will assign zero value to it okay because the score in the starting will be zero only and then when the collision will be occurred okay in that case uh, i will change the score value means i will increase the score value by one so whenever you will kill the alien the score value will be increased by one so if I print this variable so that you can see the score value is getting increased. So if I try to kill this enemy on the console, you will see the uh, score value. Okay. So the score is one now. It's two, three. And this way the score will keep on increasing whenever the bullet will hit the enemy. I hope you understood till here. So basically what we did, we called a function collision and once you call a function this particular code will be executed where firstly we calculated the distance between the bullet and the alien okay and that distance will be stored inside this distance variable then we checked if the distance is less than 27 so if the distance would be less than 27 it will appear to us that the bullet is striking the alien okay in that case i'm simply returning a true value so once you return a true value this true value will go 
at the same position from where you are calling a function right and uh, this uh, true value will go inside this collision occurred variable okay then we will check here that if collision is occurred or not so if this will be true then this condition will become true and this code will be executed and here firstly i change the uh, bullet y position back to 480 right and then i set the alien x and the alien y position okay back to its original uh, positions which will be random values then i am also increasing the score okay uh, but we don't have to print anything so we need to display this score on the screen at the top left corner okay so in pygame uh, the score which is a text right so it cannot be written directly to the screen so the first step is to create a font object with a given font size and font style and the second step is to render the text into an image with a given color okay and the third step is to blit the image to the screen so there is a different way of adding text on the screen okay so what i will do at the top firstly i'll be creating the font object okay where we'll mention what is the font styling and the size of the font that you will be using okay so with the help of this pygame module i'll be using this font module dot sys font method you can mention uh, arial here okay this is the font styling and then the size of the text would be 32 pixels and then uh, we can mention uh, whether you want the text to be uh, bold or italic okay so i want the text to be bold so i'll mention bold like this so this is how you create font object so once your font object is created after this we have to create the image basically okay so we will render the text into an image so what you can do either you can create a separate function or you can add uh, the lines of code inside this while running loop so it's up to you what you want to do uh, but uh, for now let's uh, define a function okay uh, so that uh, it's not messy right inside this while running loop so i'll define a function score okay Firstly, inside this function, we have to create image of our score. So how can we do it? We'll use this font object. Okay, this one. Then dot render method. And to this method, we have to pass the text that you want to see on the screen. Right? So the text would be uh, score colon like this. And I'm going to use f string, which is used to concatenate the string with a variable. Okay, so just after this score, you will see the score value and that score value is stored inside the score variable if you remember this one right so i'll add this variable so in uh, curly braces we'll have to add that variable score like this okay and then if you want the characters of the text to be smooth then you will have to pass true value here and then you need to pass what will be the color of the text okay uh, so i'll make the text as white so i'll simply pass white here so this will be nothing but the image okay so that i can store in some variable img okay and then once you got the image now you can uh, blit this image in order to see it on the screen okay so how do we blit an image we use screen dot blit method and here we pass the image name which is img in this case and then where you want to blit this image okay so i want to see this score uh, at a distance of 10 from the x-axis and at a distance of 10 from the y-axis okay now if i will run you won't be able to see any changes because we have just defined a function but we have not called it so this score function from where we will call it since we have to see the score continuously we should be calling it from this while running loop right so just here we can call it just above this update line 
सो आई राइट स्कोर ओके और सिंस दिस वेरिएबल एंड द फंक्शन नेम बोथ आर सेम सो इट विल बी अ कन्फ्यूजन सो वट यू कैन डू यू कैन चेंज द फंक्शन नेम इफ यू वॉन्ट स्कोर टेक्स्ट लाइक दिस एंड सिमिलरली यू कैन डू द चेंज हेयर ऑल्सो लाइक दिस ओके नाउ इफ आई रन द स्कोर यू कैन सी वी आर सींग द स्कोर हेयर ओके सो वंस यू किल दिस एनिमी यू कैन सी द स्कोर इज इंक्रीजिंग बिकॉज वी पासड स्कोर वेरेबल टू दैट फंक्शन सो आई होप यू आर गेटिंग इट so firstly we created a font object where we mentioned the styling and the size of the text okay then we converted the text into an image okay and after that we simply blitted that image on the screen okay so i hope you understood it and similarly we will be creating game over text okay but when we want to see that text when this enemy will come this much closer to the spaceship okay and also i have done one change here you will see the enemy is coming 40 pixels down okay so basically i changed this uh value uh this one alien speed y earlier the alien was coming down by 10 pixels but i have modified it to 40 pixels okay so you can also do this change okay so firstly let's apply the condition that when our game would be over okay so in this while running loop only we'll apply a condition uh, we can apply anywhere so let's apply here okay that if uh, alien y okay because we'll be considering the y value only if this is uh, greater than 480 pixels okay why 480 because uh, tip of the spaceship is at 480 pixels only y position right so that's why i am uh, checking if alien y is greater than 480 pixels it means it is closer to the spaceship only okay in that case i will simply disappear the alien okay so how will i disappear or how do we disappear something in a uh, pi game simply give a very large value to this alien y variable okay like for example 2000 so the alien will go to the 2000 position okay and uh, because our uh, window size is not uh, till 2000 so you won't be able to see the alien okay so this is the way of disappearing any object in pi game okay so now if i run this code and let's wait uh, for this enemy to come closer to the spaceship so as you can see the alien has come this much closer to the spaceship and now it has disappeared but it came below uh, this spaceship and then got disappeared okay so i have to change this value a little bit i'll change it to 420 let's see let this alien come closer to the spaceship see uh, once it reached 420 pixels uh, it is destroyed means it has disappeared it has gone to 2000 y position basically okay so i hope you understood it so once uh, the alien disappears then only i want to show game over text in the middle okay so let's add that text also just like we added a uh, score text okay in the same way we'll do it so firstly we need to create a font object so it would be created in the similar way so i'll simply copy this line and here i'll paste it like this and here i'll change the object variable name font uh, game over like this okay and uh, if you want to keep the styling as arial it's up to you which is styling you prefer and uh, then the size would be 64 pixels because uh, this time uh, the text size 
should be increased right so once you uh, create object of the font and now you need to render the text into an image and then you need to blit it so again i'll be defining a function so def game over like this so this is the function name okay and inside this function uh, i'll be using these two lines only so i'll simply copy these two lines and i'll paste here right so instead of font this time the object is font game over okay and instead of adding this score uh, this time i just have to add a string that game over okay so i don't need to use f string i'll simply use uh, game over text uh, then again if you want to change the color of the text it's up to you but uh, i prefer white only and then uh, to blit the image you need to pass the image object so in this case uh, also the uh, img is the object but if you want you can change it uh, like image game over like this and here also you need to pass the same name okay image game over like this okay then where you want to see this uh, game over text so these are the values that i have used in my original project So x coordinate is 200 and y coordinate is 250. So from where we will call this function, we'll call it where we are disappearing the enemy, right? So here only we'll call this function game over, right? Let's run and see if we are able to see that text or not. Uh, let the enemy come closer to the spaceship. So hopefully now we will see that text, right? Game over. So I hope uh, you understood it. And now to make our game interesting, we need to create multiple enemies so that uh, the spaceship can uh, try to shoot all of them. Okay. Right now we are only shooting one enemy, uh, but uh, we need to shoot multiple enemies and that would be a bit tough, right? So in order to create multiple enemies, we will be using the concept of list here. Okay. So suppose if there will be six enemies in total. Okay. Then in that case, we will be requiring six enemy images. Okay. So those six enemy images, I will be storing in a list. Okay. So I will be creating a variable uh, alien IMG. So this is a list and initially this is empty list. Okay. And inside this list only, I will be adding all the six alien images. Okay. Similarly, we will be requiring uh, alien X list so that inside this we can add all the X coordinates of all six aliens. Right. Similarly, we will be requiring alien Y coordinates. Right and similarly alien speed x and alien speed y and now to insert values inside this list we will use a loop right but firstly let me create a variable number of aliens okay and initially in the starting let me add six aliens only okay so let me use a for loop to insert six alien images inside this list six alien x and the y coordinates and alien speed x and alien speed y for all the six aliens okay so i'll use a loop here for i in range number of aliens so this for loop will be executed six times and all the six alien image alien x y coordinates alien speed x alien speed y will be stored inside these empty lists okay i hope you are getting it so the way of storing is to use append method of list okay so instead of equal to we'll use dot append method okay like this so similarly i'll do it for all these variables here like this so after adding the values inside these lists now 
we need to uh, move all the aliens right initially only one alien was moving but now we need to move all the six aliens right so we'll come inside this while running loop so where we have written the code for the movement of the alien so this is the code right this complete right so what we are going to do since we need to move six aliens so here also we'll be using a for loop for i in uh, range uh, number of aliens right and here what i'm going to do i'm going to provide indentation first of all like this and then i will be accessing one by one all the aliens okay and i will move them right so the way is inside square brackets we need to pass this i value so when the loop will run for the first time first alien will move okay and similarly when the loop will run the second time second alien will move okay so wherever you see alien x alien y or alien img alien speed x alien speed y we have to add square brackets and inside it we have to pass this i value okay so this is the way of accessing any elements of a list okay so if you uh, remember that we have created these lists right and inside these lists we have added uh, the enemy images then x and the y coordinates alien speed x alien speed y right so we are simply accessing them here inside this for loop okay so just change all of them like this and now if i will run still you will be getting an error because we need to do more changes so if you see this is the condition that we applied for game over okay and this was applied for only one enemy right but now we have to do it for all the six enemies right so we have to add this code inside that for uh, loop okay so let me just cut from here and let me add it inside this for loop okay like this and uh, i'll add i indexing so suppose first alien y value is greater than 420 in that case i will move that first alien to uh, which position 2000 position so that it looks disappeared to us right but what about other aliens okay which will be at the top so we need to disappear them also so in that case i will be using another for loop here for j in range uh, number of aliens okay so i want to disappear all of them right so what i'll do instead of i this time i'll pass j variable okay so all the six aliens will be disappeared okay they will simply move to 2000 y position okay and once our game is over then we'll simply come out of the loop okay then we don't want uh, the loop to continue okay and now instead of showing the collision for just one enemy we need to show it for all the enemies right so again we need to move this code uh, in the same for loop okay so just cut from here and paste it here okay just make sure you paste with the same uh, proper indentation okay and uh, if i run this code you will be getting an error right because if you see we are calling a collision function and in that collision function also uh, we are using uh, alien x and alien y values right so what uh, we can do is instead of uh, creating a function what we can do we can uh, just simply cut these two lines let's remove this thing and let's directly use those two lines in our code in this while running loop so we will not have to uh, call a function right what we will simply do we will simply paste these lines here like this 
okay so directly we are calculating the distance between the bullet and the alien here and then we are checking that if the distance is less than 27 then this code will be executed right so let me just change the values here like alien x it would be alien x of i then uh, alien y of i right similarly here it will be alien x of i and alien y of i like this right and if i will run again still you will see error i hope now you are getting why you are seeing this error because we need to blit all the six images right right now only one uh, alien image is getting blit right so we'll simply cut it from here so once you paste it then you can just simply add i in a square brackets like this okay so when the loop will run for the first time then first image will be blitted when it will run the second time the second image will be blitted at these x and the y coordinates okay and these values will be different for different alien images okay i hope you understood it and now if i run it you can see all the six enemies are here right now it's much more interesting game right you can try to shoot all of them and your score will be increased okay once any one of the enemy touches uh, 430 border right 430 pixel then the game will be over and all these enemies will move to 2000 position okay so i hope uh, you have understood everything till here okay now the next thing is uh, when i'm trying to shoot the bullet okay i want to hear a sound similarly when i destroy any enemy i should hear a sound and i will also add a background music to our game okay so let's see how we can do all these things so there is this uh, mixer module which is a part of this pi game only so we need to import that in order to load music and play music okay so we can import like this from pygame uh, import mixer module okay once you import this module then again you need to initialize it so you'll write mixer dot init like this so once you initialize it then you will be able to use the methods present inside this mixer module okay so first thing is that you need to load the background music that will be played okay so it's very easy you just have to use mixer dot music dot load method okay and here you need to pass the file name in the form of a string okay so from where you will get the music files you can simply search on google background music for games and there you will get many audio files you can download of your choice So there are three music files that I'm pasting here background.wave okay then there is this explosion.wave then there is this laser.wave so whenever you will kill the enemy you will hear this sound whenever the bullet is fired you will hear this sound okay so you can uh, also search uh, the explosion sound and the laser sound on Google you will get it from there only okay otherwise i will definitely be providing you all these files okay so to this load uh, method we will be passing this background.wav file okay once you load the music in your code now you can play this music uh, you will use this mixer module dot music dot play method like this okay and if you want to play this music continuously while you play this game you just have to uh, pass minus one to this play method okay so this music will now be on a loop and now if i run it you will hear the music continuously so just like we loaded this background dot wave uh, file in the same way we have to load this laser.wave file 
but where we will load and play this from where we are shooting this bullet right so i'm simply going to copy these two lines and uh, if you remember that we are shooting the bullet when we are pressing the space bar key right so here we are pressing the space bar key so inside this condition only uh, we'll simply add those two lines and here we'll simply change the file name so the file name is laser.wave and instead uh, of providing minus one i won't pass any value because if you'll pass minus one then you will hear this laser dot wave sound continuously okay but i don't want to hear it continuously okay then the next file is this explosion dot wave so when you want to hear this explosion dot wave you want to hear it when you are shooting the alien right so where the collision is getting occurred you can see here the collision is getting occurred right when the distance is less than 27 so here we'll simply load the file first of all so the file name is explosion dot wave and then we'll simply play it so now if i run this code so what is basically happening uh, this music that we loaded uh, background music this is getting stopped when we are shooting a bullet or when we are killing the alien so this is because we loaded a music here right and then we are also loading the music here right so what is happening this laser dot wave is simply overwriting that background dot wave file okay so instead of load method we will be simply using mixer dot sound class and here we need to mention the file name uh, laser dot wave okay and this will give us the bullet sound right so that we can store in some variable bullet sound like this and then we simply need to play this bullet sound so we'll write bullet sound variable dot play method so in order to play a music on top of another music firstly you load the main music and then you use this sound class to play a music on top of that main music okay so same thing we will have to do in case of collision so instead of loading explosion dot wave file okay what we'll do we'll simply paste that code here and here we'll change the file name this one will be explosion dot wave and we can change the variable name also here explosion and then we can simply play this explosion sound so explosion dot play now if i run it so i hope you understood everything this was our first game using pygame and now i guess you have an idea of how basic functionality of a game is created so if you have any doubts or suggestions just let me know in the comment section thank you for watching